Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Belmont Journal, Belmont's own program for hyperlocal news and community affairs programming. I'm your host, Roger Colton. With the 2020 presidential primary elections right around the corner here in Massachusetts, for the first time, there is an early voting period. Early voting from, will occur from Monday, February 24th to Friday, February 28th. All early voting here in Belmont will occur at the Belmont Town Hall. Early voting is available for, for all voters in Massachusetts. This is unlike absentee voting, which is available only to those voters who are not in Belmont on Election Day or who cannot otherwise vote due to medical or religious reasons. Direct your questions about early voting to the Belmont Town Clerk at 617-993-2600. Hello, and welcome to This Week in the Belmontonian. I have with me today Franklin Tucker, who is the editor and publisher of The Belmontonian, Belmont's online source for hyperlocal news. Franklin, this week there was big news on the budget for the new middle and high school. Can you tell us what happened? That's right. About a third of the cost um, uh, for the building was uh, um, came through. Uh, basically, these were bids for... Uh, uh, the trades, as they're called, and the trades are like the HVAC people and people who do substantial work at the uh, school. Um, and uh, thankfully, or hope, thankfully, we had um, an underbid uh, of about uh, out of a seventy-one million dollars in total bids. That's about one point six million dollars under what was expected, and that's a great news because it allowed uh, work that was um, uh, pushed off the um, off the construction site is now put back on like the skylights um, and um, uh, heating for the um, uh, paths that leads to um, uh, the um, loading dock and things like that. And given the bids that came in last week, two-thirds of the uh, of the budget is now baked in, if you will. That's right, because these uh, can't be changed. Um, the final third is now uh, non-trade bids. Uh, they are being uh, negotiated with uh, Skanska, which is the general contractor, and they will be coming in um, uh, in late March, early April will be the, the deadline, and we'll know by then what basically 100% of what the cost will be. But right now, Skanska said that it's a good market, and they, they are negotiating, and, and they know what the, the, the price mar uh, target they have to look for. And the non-trades are folks who come in for a day or two. Well, yeah, that'd be like uh, if you put up blue board or, or you put up, um, you know, just a little bit of like, um, it's, it's not something that you would have on a daily basis. Okay, let's close the, uh, the door on that because there is also big news on the operating budget. That's right, the uh, uh, first uh, big tra uh, uh, draft of the uh, 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 fiscal year 21 budget has come through, and uh, as we expected, it's uh, it's much higher than it was last year. It's about a six percent increase. Um, so and the, the total is, is about 130, 135, 136, 137. It's, okay. it's, it's it's a it's, it's a substantial number, um, and uh, so there was about a five, about a, a little over five million dollar uh, gap that needed to be filled. And, un and unlike what, the, what we expected, which was an override in November to fill that gap. To what, fill the fiscal 21 one gap. gap. What happened is that um, uh, uh, Patrice Garvin came in and explained that uh, she was going to cobble together a, uh, a, a different um, uh, way of, of filling that gap, and that was using one-time funds. Um, about five, you know, uh, so it was about three million dollars in free cash, um, <clears throat> a million dollars uh, from Belmont Light. It's basically, you know, the, asking them to, to pony up a little bit, uh, and that money, the uh, a little over one million dollars from the, the one million dollars from uh, Belmont Light, which is a payment in lieu of, of, taxes. of taxes, which is called pilot program. That is that will be paid back to them. You know, this is more like a borrowing. Um, and then uh, it will, they are also finishing it up by uh, using about a million dollars in water and sewer uh, right. uh, funds. Um, why they're doing it? Why don't they just use the uh, override funds? You know, a six million dollar override. Well, if you if you push that back a year, you know, push it back a year, you're looking at uh, extending that override for five six years. You know, so you won't have to come back to the uh, to the, to the taxpayers to to get those funds. Um, and that's basically why they did it. So there's good news on both the uh, the operating side and on the uh, 
middle and high school. Yes, it is. That's great. We have been speaking with Franklin Tucker, editor and publisher of The Belmontonian. Hello, everyone. Welcome to This Week in the Belmont Citizen Herald. I have with me today award-winning journalist Joanna Juvelis. Uh, welcome back, and congratulations. Thank you, Roger. For local election coverage. Yes, the New England Newspaper and Press Association. They have an annual competition for journalists. And I entered, and I, and I did get a third place award. So I'm very happy about it. Thank you. Well, let's uh, talk about something that's related to elections in many ways. Oh, uh, yes. In Belmont, the uh, Belmont League of Women Voters just received a proclamation from the select board. They did. On, on February 3rd, they were presented with a proclamation in honor of their 84th year serving the community. And it also happens to be the 100th anniversary of the League of Women Voters in the United States, as well as the 100th anniversary of the Year of the Woman's Right to Vote. And when we think about uh, the League of Women Voters here in Belmont, uh, I think about elections. They publish the voters guide, they have they the do. candidates night. It's great. They, they, they do so much and they even provide rides to the polls on election day for people who may not be able to get there otherwise. Um, they host brown bag lunches with really good guest speakers. They advocate for um, policies. Um, they've helped, they helped uh, with sensible marijuana laws most recently. Well, and the League was very involved with having uh, Belmont move to a town administrator. Yes, very involved in that, as well as consolidating town departments. So congratulations to Mary Ann Scally, who is the, uh, the head is. of the League here she in is. Belmont, and to the rest of the participants. Yes. And it's important to realize uh, that the League of Women Voters is open to both men and women. Very important to recognize that, yes. Well, let's close the door on that and move to the DPW because the DPW project is coming very close very to completion. Close. So I did have a tour recently and this time I did not have to wear a construction hat because that's how far along it is. It is basically completed. They're just so they doing like some finishing work and basically um, they have to get furniture, they have to get lockers very minor things. It's, it's ready to use. If there was a snow emergency, they, they could use it, but they, they'd rather wait until the spring when, when it's really ready and they plan to have a, a ribbon cutting. And I'll tell you a little bit about the project. Okay. It, it's basically adding 10 years to the existing facility, which is located at 37 C Street. It, it's, it was really, um, before this renovation, you walked in there and it was, it was really, I hate to say, kind of scary in a way. Now you can walk in there and you can actually breathe. There's, you know, it's very nicely painted. They redid a couple of things to make it handicap accessible. There's an area for subcontractors to check in. And then they put an addition on the back of the building, which adds an office space, a training room, a really nice break room, laundry facilities showering facilities for both men and women as well as locker facilities and bathrooms. And one of the nice things about this, it, it came in at about $1.6 million. Right. And that was all done without any resort to no uh, tax increase. Exactly, not, not, not hitting the po property taxes in Belmont, which so is great. So this project is uh, on budget and is. Uh, is expected to be done this spring. And it will give the facility another 10 years of life and I'm told from the DPW director, Jay Marcotte, it's really boosting the morale of his employees, which is nice to know. That's great. Well, thank you for bringing us up to date. We have been You're speaking welcome. with Joanna Ju Juvelis, who is the senior multimedia journalist for the Belmont Citizen Herald. You can read about these stories and more, both online and in the print edition of the Belmont Citizen Herald. We have with us today Belmont Town Meeting member and dancer Shanul Malik. Shanul is organizing the Bollywood Salsa Dance Night at the Fred Astaire Studios in Cushing Square. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Roger, for having me. Uh, can you tell us what's going to happen on the night of February 28th? Yes, so February 28th, it's an evening to dance, to celebrate our shared humanity and our commonality. And what better way than to dance it out? That's the event. And there, it, it's a fundraiser that night for it's a, an album? It's a, it's a fundraiser. All proceeds go to the production of the album, Delhi to Damascus, under the project 
dance, uh, transcending borders one note at a time. Uh, the album is uh, most more than a music album. It's been our quest to spark a dialogue on embracing humanity as your community and upholding the ideals of uh, compassion, a global community, uh, and what better way than to do it through music, which connects all human beings. And we have a clip uh, yes. that we can take a look at. Let's, yes. uh, let's listen in for a minute. Delhi to Damascus brings together music from India and music from Syria. Some of the music is arranged, some of it is traditional music that we have worked on, and of course we have composed some new tracks. It conveys the message of love and harmony. I strongly believe that humanity is my community and music is my tool to serve it. Now, this music is more than music. Mm -hmm. I've heard you talk about how music can help connect people mm -hmm. and help uh, raise awareness on how different cultures mm -hmm. can be surprisingly mm -hmm. related. Can mm -hmm. you expand on that? Yes. Uh, so the project led by Sandeep Das, uh, he's a Grammy award-winning tabla artist and composer and also member of the Silk Road Ensemble and Yo-Yo Ma. Um, he started this project with the, with the hope to spark, all of us taking a moment to reflect and spark a thought on what could be instead of what is. Uh, and music connects us all. Uh, you know, historically, human spirit has been transcending borders, literally and figuratively, and what that brings is conference of cultures. And in this project, we found such commonalities between Syria and India, which may seem different, but you can see the conference of cultures as it's exemplified in the language of Sanskrit, which is uh, an Indian language, but you have found, we found its inscriptions in, on tablets in Syria. And then the Sufi music and Arabic maqams of Syria are very much prevalent even now in the Indian music. If I can try to spit back one of the things I think I just heard you say is yes. music, the language of music sort of transcends yes. language. Yes. That, uh, mm -hmm. can you? Yes, yeah, so you and I can be from two totally different cultures, not speak the same language, but a music is played and it, evo it brings memories, it, it evokes nostalgia, and we respond to music in a way any human being would, and that's what connects us. It doesn't need a language. All it does is it, you need the music and people. Uh, on February 28th yes. at the, uh, the Bollywood de Salsa uh, mm -hmm. dance night, uh, uh, that, that's not a lecture, right? <laughs> it, it is participatory, it, it yes. is a dance. It's event. going to be an evening of Bollywood rhythms, salsa rhythms. We will have instruction. People will be teaching you Bollywood dance. Uh, so you have to tap into the inner child in you so that you can have fun. Um, there's going to be food, uh, all kinds of food, and ice cream and raffle uh, prizes. So an evening to get together and celebrate our humanity through dance. And why in Belmont? Why is this being held in Belmont? Uh, well, one, I'm a Belmont town resident and I love the town. A Belmont mom okay. and my kids go here, so this seemed like a natural choice. And a big shout out and thank you to Elizabeth Wu and Fred Astaire for making us, being a thought partner in this. Uh, if someone is interested in attending, mm -hmm. where do they get tickets? We have a registration page on Eventbrite uh, and they can also contact me and I believe there's going to be an information posted up on the television with more link information. That's great. We have been speaking with Shanul Malik, who is organizing the Bollywood Salsa Dance Night at the Fred Astaire Studio in Cushing Square on Friday night, February 28th. <laughs> Belmont High's ski team has plowed through the year despite the fact that there has been very little snow. BMC's Chet Messer provides us with some insights into this wintertime sport. There are 27 members of the Belmont ski team, 14 girls and 13 boys, along with a girls coach and a boys coach. There is much preparation to endure. Ski races only last from 25 to 45 seconds. To practice three days a week at Wachusett Mountain and then race at Neshoba Valley on Tuesday requires a minimum of 45 minute bus ride in each direction. There is equipment to load and unload, and this winter they must deal with a lack of snow. On this day, they travel to Neshoba. 
They unpack their gear and make a five-minute walk to the lodge to drop off their skis and proceed inside to dress for the races. They receive and fasten a ski ticket where it can be seen, then head to the slopes. Right now we're heading up as a team to do course inspection where we're going to look at how the course is laid out, think about some strategies for where we want to place our turns and how we're going to win some races. This is a more complicated course, so we're trying to get them to see. Their, um, for inspection, we're looking at the, primarily for our more experienced skiers, they're trying to find the right line. And from there, we're trying to move their turns up the hill. We're really focusing on getting an earlier and earlier turn and a more direct line for our more experienced skiers. It's really great working with these Belmont student athletes. They're just a wonderful group, very supportive of each other. And I've seen a lot of improvement in all of their skiing over the course this year. Really proud of them. Asked girls team captain Rebecca Anderson what it was like to ski only on man-made snow. Um, I mean, they've been really warm all year. Um, that's pretty typical for Massachusetts, but it definitely slows us down. And it's a different type of skiing than a lot of people are used to. Um, and just so many DNFs when people fall. A DNF is did not finish. Emily, Ashley, and Rebecca have all qualified to ski in the state meet, which will be held at Berkshire East. So it's out in Western Mass. Hopefully more snow out there. Yes, <laughs> and hopefully a little colder too. Oh, it's so much fun. The team is just so good. We've really amped it up this year. We have cowbells, and we all stand out here and cheer for every racer, um, all the way down to the last one. Um, and all the bus rides are so much fun. We spend so much time together that like you really have to bond as a group. Otherwise, it's just it's so much time. Here's Chet Messer to catch us up with this week in Belmont High Sports. In girls basketball, Belmont defeated Arlington 58 to 43, but then lost at home on Tuesday night 60 to 52 to Burlington. This brings their Middlesex League record to 10 and 5 and overall 11 and 7. Belmont is in second place in the Liberty Division to Woburn, who's 15 and 0. They play Woburn their final league game before starting tournament play. The Belmont boys' Marotta basketball team defeated Arlington 90-66 and became the Liberty Division champions of the Middlesex League. On Tuesday night, they defeated the Burlington Red Raiders in Burlington by the score of 70-61. This was a thrilling come-from-behind victory. Belmont is ranked 18th by the Boston Globe, and Woburn will be their final league game before tournament play. The Marotta boys ice hockey team tied Winchester 1-1 and then lost to Reading 2-1. They are 6-5-3 in the Liberty Division, placing third, and overall they are 9-5-4. Their final league game is against Arlington, which is undefeated at 13-0-1 and ranked number one by the Boston Globe. In Marotta girls ice hockey, Belmont defeated Lexington and Winchester by identical 3 to nothing scores. Maggie O'Connor, number 24, scored a shorthanded goal in the win over Lexington. In the Winchester victory, number 22, Megan Noon, scored the winning goal. The Marotta girls also defeated the Medford Malden girls team and now stand at 7-2-4 and four in the Liberty Division for third place. Overall, they are 12-2-4 and, and ranked number 12 by the Globe. In Belmont's 12 wins, freshman goalie Bridget Gray has recorded nine shutouts and two one-goal games. The Belmont Public Library, along with the Belmont Public Schools English Education Department, organized a celebration of Valentine's Day last week. The Belmont Journal was there. Welcome, I'm Lindsay Rinder. I'm the director of the English Language Education Program at the Belmont Public Schools. Thank you everyone for coming and we hope that uh, you'll stay but also feel free to come and go. This is a drop-in event. 
but I hope that you will help yourselves to food and um, all the supplies that the Friends of the Library has generously donated for Valentine making. And the reason we wanted to have this event, especially as a joint um, endeavor between the schools and the library, is to celebrate our really strong international community here in town. The English language education, the ELE department, wants to bring people together um, and also um, making other people feel happy, whether they're in the department or not, the veterans and the immigrants and the seniors. Um, we can all do our own part, whether you speak the language or not. <laughs> this is a really great opportunity for lots of families from all different cultures to come and celebrate um, a holiday that can be enjoyed by everyone, no matter what culture you're from or what religion you are. Um, just everyone can come together and have a fun time. And I think it's great for even if you were born in America, speak only English, you're part of the community too. And so to have everyone mixed together, it's not just for English language learner families or certain people, it's for everyone. I enjoy being here today just because I get to see some of my own students or past students um, and get to see families and just get a chance to kind of chat with different families and my old students and my new students and current students um, in a different kind of setting than at school. BMC volunteer Hannah Fisher tells us about all there is to do that is new and interesting in Belmont in the coming week. Hello, this is Hannah Fisher with your community calendar. The Beach Street Center is continuing its efforts to be a welcoming space by creating more LGBTQ plus ally programming. On Wednesday, February 19th from 10 to 11 a.m., spend the morning with a center social worker, enjoy coffee and pastries, and discuss what you would like to see offered at the center. For more information, visit beachstreetcenter.org. Who doesn't love the ukulele? On Thursday, February 20th, from 1 to 2 p.m. at the Belmont Public Library, children ages 8 to 12 can learn how to hold, strum, make chords, and play songs on the ukulele. Registration for this event is required and space is limited. Register online today at belmontpubliclibrary.net. On Sunday, February 23rd, from 2 to 4 p.m. in the assembly room of the Belmont Public Library, the Belmont Historical Society will present Two Centuries of Public Transportation, an illustrated lecture by Malcolm Laughlin. Come hear about how transportation developed from the early days of stagecoaches, turnpikes, and horse cars to today's busy commuter rail and trolley bus lines. The National Association for Armenian Studies and Research will hold a book discussion on Thursday, February 27th at 7.30 p.m. Here, editor Peter Balakian and translator Aram Arkham discuss Krikor Balarian's The Ruins of Ani, From Sacred Landscape to Political Soil. Originally published in Armenian in 1910 and now available in English, this publication discusses the preservation of major historic monuments in the face of post-atrocity campaigns of cultural erasure. Do you love true stories? On Thursday, February 27th at 7 p.m., be part of the first meeting of the new Belmont Public Library Nonfiction Book Club. This month's selection is Master Thieves by Stephen Kirkian. Delve into who might have been responsible for the Isabella Stewart Gardner heist based on the author's investigative reporting. There's still time to finish the book before the meeting, so what are you waiting for? More information at belmontpubliclibrary.net. The Belmont Youth Commission and the Belmont Recreation Department are excited to announce a once every four years event, the 2020 Intergenerational Leap Year Bash. On Saturday, February 29th from 2 to 3.30 p.m. at the Beach Street Center, spend an afternoon of fun celebrating Leap Year. Get ready for leaping competitions, crafts, games, snacks, and prizes. What's this I hear about a new library? Join the Belmont Library Foundation on Saturday, February 29th at Belmont Kids Space at 10.30 a.m. for a library building project information session for families with young children. View designs and learn about the new children's room and dedicated programming spaces. Children are welcome. For more information, visit belmontlibraryfoundation.org. That's it for this week's community calendar. Enjoy the vacation week and see you next time. Well, that's it for this week's edition of the Belmont Journal. As we sign off, you can see what else is available on BMC's community programming stations. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Roger Colton. I will see you again next time.